Station, 1370 WOCA. Ten minutes before eleven o'clock. It's just beautiful out there, Robin. It's just a really nice looking Thursday, huh? It is gorgeous. Uh, Dr. Michael Berger was on the phone. He is the program manager for cardiology research for the biomedical laboratory and the clinical science research services in the Office of Research and Development at the Veterans Administration. Wow, that is a, he must have a big business card. That's a long <laughs> time. Uh, interestingly enough, and coincidentally enough, this morning on the Veterans Show, they were talking a little bit about heart disease and. They were asking the uh, the doctor who was on that show about women, the different uh, the different symptoms, I guess, for a mm-hmm. woman who might be uh, having a heart attack. Um, and we've heard kind of that before, but I never heard it in the I guess through the lens of, of somebody who's a veteran. You know, mm-hmm. not that it was any different, really. I, I suppose. Um, but Dr. Berger is going to talk to us about the risk factors of cardiovascular disease and what the VA is doing to help veterans fight the disease and in today's military we have men and women uh good morning doc- dr michael Burgio. good morning sir how are you i'm good thank you for having me where are you calling from i'm calling from washington dc how's the weather there how's the weather uh it's a little chilly and i saw a little bit of snow on my way into the office this morning oh nice we're, we're in florida i don't know if you know where you're talking to but when, when you live here, you, you look at the snow and say, gosh, I want to see that. And when you where you are, you want to be here probably, right? <laughs> yeah. The, uh, oh, absolutely. Where it's warm. The grass or is greener. Least. Yeah. Well, the grass is literally greener here <laughs> right now. <laughs> so t- tell me about, I mean, the focus on the VA is interesting when it comes to any disease, really. Is, it, is there a difference between the way the VA helps um, th- their, their uh, clientele, is that bad? their patients, as opposed to the way a doctor who's with the civilians treat their patients? Well, different hospital systems will have different ways of doing things, but I think the VA is often on the cutting edge of healthcare delivery. Uh, for example, we were a very early adopter of the electronic medical record, um, which now is becoming more and more common on the private side, but the VA has been using it for over a decade. Oh, that makes sense, too. I, and that only makes sense. I can't, I can't imagine, you, because how many times have you gone, has anybody gone to the doctor and say, do you have your records? And you say, oh, my gosh, I didn't know I was supposed to bring them. Well, today you just yeah. you, you go online, right, or you do whatever you do. Uh, yeah, that's correct. So if you are in, if you go to one VA hospital and then you're on vacation and, and something unfortunate happens and you end up at a different VA hospital, they should have access to all of your medical data. Uh, it seems that uh, everybody is covered really well at the VA for everything like uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, ladies that you know, uh, female veterans for their female issues and things. But it seems like dental is by the wayside. Are you making improvements on that? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, it's hard, difficult for me to comment uh, on dental because it's well outside of sort of my area of expertise. But I know that the senior leadership here, the new administration, is really focused on on uh, making sure that we have uh, access to health care of all forms for our veterans. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that is something that we're working hard on. Oh, wonderful. And just to try to segue from dental to cardiovascular, um, one of the things we've heard is that you can, a dentist sometimes can see telltale signs, an eye doctor mm-hmm. too, right? Sometimes, right? sometimes doctors who specialize in other parts of your body can tell something's up with your heart because whatever's wrong may manifest in a way, right? That, that's true. So um, oral health actually has a connection to, to lots of diseases. So, you know, if you have someone who has a poor oral health condition, that, in fact, increases their risk for a variety of other chronic disease, including cardiovascular disease. Uh, do do uh, uh, veterans that uh, are suffering from post-traumatic stress, is that a huge factor to heart disease? Well, so this is something that VA research is actually recently uncovering, but it does appear that there is a connection between PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and an increased risk in cardiovascular disease. Now, the exact reasoning underlying that is going to require more research, but it seems that perhaps 
Um, veterans who are afflicted with PTSD have a decreased ability to dilate their heart vessel, their blood vessels, I'm sorry, which can put increased pressure on the heart. And how does it how does it differ for women? Um, well, so actually, women veterans have a higher um, incidence of PTSD than their male counterparts, and I in so um, in both it's a, in both women and men it's a concern, and, and this does lead to sort of a, I think the, a broader question about uh, different diseases do present themselves in different ways in men and women, and men and women do have different risk factors for certain diseases, and so the VA is very actively conducting research to try and parse out these differences. How do you, how do you know if somebody's at risk of, of anything? Uh, I guess, especially PTSD is considered psychological. Does, does time cure all wounds? Or is, could a World War II veteran, for example, somebody who's kind of up there in age, still be treated for PTSD after all these years? Uh, well, I'm sure they could still be 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 treated um you know as far as the the prevalence or the effectiveness after that amount of time is something that um you know i don't have specific knowledge of i'm not sure uh how how well it's been studied i believe most of our ptsd research which again is a little bit outside of my bailiwick has been on veterans coming back from our more recent um engagements uh do you think uh women are having these problems at a younger age than say years ago when it was mainly like uh, 50 or over so i mean it, it is cardiovascular disease is, is still age related so as you get older the um the risks go up and that's true for both men and women uh i personally am unsure whether the sort of the the age of presentation has been decreasing and how about the uh, obesity factor in the men and women veterans? Uh, well, so obesity is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, and it's also a, uh, an issue that's common in our veteran population. So it, clearly it's an important issue, um, along with other risk factors like lacking physical activity, smoking, having high blood pressure or high cholesterol, or uh, uncontrolled diabetes. So oh, kind of like, like with the rest of the population, lifestyle is something you as a doctor would look at. Um, well, so absolutely, lifestyle is an important factor. When uh, people come to the uh, uh, VA, do you ever work in tandem with other hospitals in the area for different treatments? Um, so, well, for the VA research program, which is where, where I'm in, I'm not directly interacting with patients, so I don't work in a hospital. Um, but we do try to cultivate collaborations with uh, universities, with nonprofit organizations, with other government agencies and industry uh, to try and develop new new therapies uh, to understand how to prevent disease and really try to amplify those efforts to help the health of veterans and uh, the nation. Okay, so does the research work you're doing give you any hope? That, I mean, do you see uh, a, a bright future for those who might be veterans with cardiovascular issues? Um, absolutely. I think, I think ongoing research is showing ways that we can better treat, we can improve existing treatments, and there are also, you know, ex uh, potential exciting treatments on the horizon. Uh, for example, we, there was a recent study that was led by our Dr. William Cushman from our Memphis VA Medical Center that showed that um, in hypertensive individuals, when you're trying to control their, high, their blood pressure, if you set a lower target than we typically set now, that you actually further improve their their chance their their risk factors for both cardiac and kidney diseases so wow. you know, this Gosh. study was able to find by that by more aggressively controlling blood pressure that you reduce the risk by over a third wow and just just that knowledge alone i mean we could all do something about our own lifestyles to try to improve our blood pressure i would think uh, uh, yep, so that, I mean, it's related to physical activity, and it's also related to, to smoking. Yeah, so quit smoking and start walking. <laughs> and there's, uh, then, and uh, smoking has been seen on the decrease, correct? 
Uh, my understanding is the prevalence of smoking is decreasing, um, and this is actually another area where where the the, the the Veteran Affairs Research Program has had a big impact. Impact. So our research led to the development of the nicotine patch in the eighties. Wow, that's awesome, Dr. Michael Bircher. Thank you so much. Um, the website I have is uh, va.gov. Is there another website you want to recommend? Uh, so I would like to, st uh, if you're interested in VA research, please go to www.research.va.gov, and that'll give you information both on our ongoing programs and how to volunteer. Okay, excellent. Nice. Thank you, Doctor. This is WOCA Ocala. We'll be right back. Seen Democrats of making up a controversy. Tweeting this morning, the Democrats had to come up with a story as to why they lost the election, and so badly. So they made up a story. Russia, fake news. But Democrats taking it very much for real and calling for an independent investigation into... That members of President Trump's inner circle reportedly had regular contact with Russian intelligence officials during the 2016 campaign.